Hello and welcome back to The Note. We've all seen some very shocking images out of the Ukraine in the last week or two, and that's followed an extremely torrid and difficult start to the year for emerging markets as a whole. But should we be quite so worried about political turmoil in emerging markets, and could it even be creating some opportunities to find bargains? With me now to discuss this is the Chief Investment Officer of Advance Emerging Capital here in London, Slim Feriani. Slim, thank you very much for joining me at the FT today. Pleasure. Let's start by taking a look uh, at two of the basic, you know, most important measures of equity valuation, the price earnings multiple and the price to book multiple. Um, these are numbers for uh, emerging markets as an asset class. Does this really suggest that uh, emerging markets are cheap or is there a risk that they could grow even cheaper? Well, there's always a risk that they grow cheaper, but mm. uh, certainly within a historical context, this is as, uh, is as cheap as it's been uh, in a decade or so. Uh, therefore, there's a lot that's been priced in, a lot of bad news has been priced in. And as value long-term contrarian investors, we think uh, we are you know, at or near as good an entry point as we've had uh, in a long, long time. And some people would argue about the E on PE, yeah. which is why having price to book in there is a more robust probably valuation measure, and it looks quite attractive. Now, this is obviously attractive for patient long-term investors, not for uh, some short-term trader who want to go in and out and make some quick buck in the next six or eight weeks. But presumably one of the pictures we've discovered from the last six or eight weeks is that a lot of people are investing on, in emerging markets on that basis, aren't they? Is, is that a part of the problem with emerging markets at the moment, that capital flows out as easily as it does? Most of that money that's coming out is what we call, what we would refer to as hot money, frankly. There's a lot of ETF type of money, retail money, and that's usually the first money that goes in and out. So as the dust settles and as people start to finally feel a bit more comfortable with the world, then um, a lot of money will go back in, particularly dedicated institutional money. We think we could see that we're seeing it at our end. There's a lot more interest now from long-term dedicated institutional right. investors trying to actually add to their position. Okay, let's now move on to the specifics of uh, the political situation at the moment. This is a fascinating chart you've prepared comparing uh, the Ukraine uh, with your home country, Tunisia, which mm -hmm. um, went through uh, a series of events very similar in many ways to what's happening in Ukraine three years ago. Uh, I have to say that chart does not look the way I would have expected it to look. How do you go about dealing with political unrest, be it in Tunisia or Ukraine? What are the risks of contagion? Well, I think I'd say one thing. This is, this is a lot about the perception versus reality gap mm. to exploit when investing in emerging and in particular frontier markets. Mm. There is a big story of uh, capturing that perception versus reality gap. So the perception, as you rightly said, is they would either both indices and both mark, equity markets would have behaved relatively similarly because they both have had some political issues, or maybe, if anything, maybe the Tunisian stock markets would have done worse because they've had, you know, something. Well, then next door to Libya for a start. Next door to all Libya, that there, yeah. you see what's happened, what's happening in Egypt, etc. Mm. So the whole Arab Spring, Jasmine Revolution type of thing, you would have thought would have affected Tunisia, but yet, and then that chart starts in early '11. It was a blip down. Uh, now, the story in frontier markets, this is the most inefficient asset class. Right. To, re to refer to it as an asset class. Because these markets are underinvested, under researched. Uh, they are driven mainly by local investors. And therefore, they have their own dynamics. They don't, mm. they don't necessarily follow what happens in Germany, what happens in the Dow, etc., to react. So the Tunisian market has been driven primarily by its own dynamics. And despite all the headwinds on the social and political instability, uh, you know, it's been okay-ish, certainly a lot better than the Ukraine, but then there's a turn uh, over the last few weeks, and that's very much reflective of the positive change of the political scene. So politics are very important. Yes, we have to keep a close eye on politics, political risk, but we have to diversify, and we don't have to be invested in every country. So politics and corporate governance, you just have to live with them, and you have to navigate through those with okay. your own expertise. Now, on the subject of living with politics and corporate governance, your single biggest position, as I understand it, the, the place where you're most overweight in the emerging world is Russia, yeah. which, given some of the publicity we've had about Ukraine at the moment, sounds a, a tad contrarian. Why do you feel comfortable about the very... We, we know why Russia is cheap. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel comfortable to be investing there when many others don't? Well, it's important to take a step back and look at the big picture and look at fundamentals, and that's what we do. So, uh, based on the noise, uh, no one would get anywhere near uh, Russia. And uh, we, we do know, all of us, that emerging markets are, have been the most unloved asset class, quote-unquote, over the yeah. last 18 months, three years. 
uh, and Russia is hated, full stop, not even love. So we like to be contrarians, and everything has a price. So there is a decent valuation cushion to warrant an entry point in, in Russia. On, on, on the basis of, of sovereign fundamentals, the, the quality of the sovereign balance sheet is stronger than it's been ever, probably, because they're sitting on a war chest of $600 billion of FX reserves. They have saved for rainy days. Uh, they don't have the current account deficits that other countries, the fragile five, have to deal with. And on the valuation front, if you have the right stocks managed by the right people, then what's the problem? And you can take a three to five year view, which is what we do. So we are investment managers, not traders. So we think over the next three to five years, that risk premium, which is huge now in, uh, on, on Russia, will narrow down. Within all this noise, you can always find opportunities at the right price. Okay, thank you very much indeed. I think that's the, uh, the main takeaway to be taken, taken from this. There's an awful lot to be made in uh, emerging markets and particularly frontier markets by occasionally going against your intuition when there are scary political events at foot, at foot. By when there's blood on the streets, I think probably remains quite a good piece of advice.